by this basin of uh, uh, by this local minimum. So the basin of convergence of the SSD is usually very big. And also, uh, its uh, its simple formulation is easy to derive. And uh, this is going to be become more clear now that we uh, look at how on uh, look at how we can differentiate it and find the increment of the transformation parameters that minimize the sum of square differences. So we need to we need now to discover how we can differentiate the sum of square differences to follow its negative gradient and. Um, find the optimal uh, transformation parameters p. So we can do that uh, following a Newton style optimization where the goal is to start from um, an initial estimate um, for my transformation parameters, usually the ones from the previous uh, frame the um, at t minus 1 and uh, iteratively find the increments delta p which minimize the sum of square differences between the back warped image and the reference image. So notice that the uh, the sum of square differences is only a function only of the transformation parameters p. So that is, if we vary these parameters p, the transformation parameters, uh, the back warped image will change, and consequently the SSD score will uh, will change. So mathematically, the problem is finding the parameter vector p, which uh, minimizes f. So using a Newton style uh, approach we seek to find uh, the increment delta p which minimizes the sum of square differences f and by definition this is achieved by computing the first derivative of f divided by its second derivative so this first derivative uh, f prime uh, as we all know is the gradient of the SSD uh, score and it points towards the steepest uh, ascent uh, so that means that uh, uh, we're actually interested in the negative of the gradient direction since the SSD is a measure of the similarity and this is why the negative uh, sign here is, is important so computing the gradient of F is very straightforward we use the chain rule uh, we first uh, derive the exponent so at first we only have the sum of the pixel intensity squared so we derive the exponent so we have two times um, the intensity difference times the derivative of the intensity differ difference with respect to p which is the derivative of the back warped image with respect to p which is this last term here and uh, but how exactly do we uh, derive an image with respect to transformation parameters so at this point it's it's quite hard to give an intuitive uh, interpretation of this derivative um, mathematically this, uh, this is a the derivative is a vector with the same number of elements as p so for every pixel x we have a vector of the same size as uh, with the same number of elements as p and uh, for every pixel x this uh, vector of derivatives represent the intensity variation associated with each component of p and uh, this uh, derivative of the back warped image can be computed using uh, the chain rule so we first derive the back warped image with respect to its spatial components and that's what the first term uh, means this first term here and uh, these are image gradients computed using for instance the uh, Sobel operator and the second term is the derivative of the mapping function w with respect to its parameters uh, p so since the function uh, w are actually two functions stacked there's one function w u for the vertical component and a function w v for the uh, horizontal component so that means we have two functions hence uh, a derivative for each function with respect to each component of uh, the vector p and uh, for instance in the case of the translational model uh, where you only have two offsets uh, this derivative is constant and equal to uh, the uh, identity so computing the the first uh, derivative of the SSD score is straightforward and uh, we now know how to compute it so, and, and now we know we need to derive it again to obtain the second derivative which is also referred to as the Hessian matrix so in this case we have two terms which depend on p 
and uh, thus we uh, end up with a longer longer equation for um, for the Hessian. So using the product rule, we produce two terms. The first is the derivative of the uh, intensity difference with respect to p, and the second is the derivative of the back warped image derivative. So the first term highlighted here in uh, in green is just simply the derivative of the uh, intensity difference times the derivative of the back warped image and uh, the second term is the second derivative of the uh, back warped image so here we expand the first term we see that it's uh, basically on, uh, the back warped image uh, derivative times itself and in the second uh, term we have the second derivative of the back warped image which is uh, in practice quite computationally expensive to compute. In the uh, Baker Matthews technical report they say this uh, second derivative um, degrades tracking performance due to the uh, incorporation of noise and although it does bring some noise to the, it adds some noise to the solution, the, the real reason why the second derivative degrades tracking performance is, um, is due to the reduction of the convergence basin so uh, we'll explain this in details with some illustrations in a bit. So uh, we opt to ignore this second term, so we don't use it in the computation of the uh, update parameters delta p, and uh, we end up with the Gauss-Newton uh, approximation of the Hessian. So more intuitively, um, and here I took an example from the PhD thesis of uh, Marie Dam, who made these uh, very interesting um, illustrations that really help to see how uh, what's the effect of the Gauss-Newton approximation on the convergence basin. And so here uh, we have a 1D example and uh, here he plotted the negative of the SSD so that becomes a, a maximization uh, uh, problem and uh, the size of the convergence basin using the Gauss-Newton approximation is shown here in blue whereas the 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 size of the convergence basin uh, using the, f the second term here in the computation of the Hessian so if we don't ignore this term here if we include it in the computation of the Hessian we see a dramatic reduction uh, in the size of the convergence basin and this is because of the shape of the second derivative and uh, you can see his uh, PhD uh, thesis for more uh, details on this and shows a very inter per interesting perspective on the uh, optimization problem. So if we come back to the uh, optimization problem and replace the gradient and Hessian in the equation to find the update of the transformation parameters, we end up with this uh, equation here. And uh, we compute this uh, delta p uh, iteratively until um, either a maximum number of iterations is, um, is reached or the norm of, uh, of this uh, parameter uh, update is uh, sufficiently small or below a threshold and uh, but how many operations are involved in uh, computing this uh, and this equation this update equation which is the the, the fundamental uh, part of the uh, Lucas Canadi uh, method well in, in sequential order in order uh, where we execute the operations we first need to compute the back warp damage um, we then compute the, the gradient of the back warped image. Um, so this is the spatial uh, gradient. Um, and next, we compute the, the uh, image difference and uh, the, the Jacobian. So uh, the, the, the gradient times the derivative of the uh, transformation parameters. And finally, we compute the, this uh, dot product and its uh, inverse, which is the uh, which. Uh, corresponds to the Hessian. And uh, in the next uh, video we'll show exactly how these uh, operations are uh, implemented and uh, just um, as, uh, as an interesting piece of information uh, this is a figure taken from the Baker Matthews technical report from 2004 and it shows um, all of these uh, steps that are listed here. So from the, com the computation of the back warped image all the way to the um, um, the creation of the gradient of the, the the Jacobian 
and uh, the Hessian. Right.